Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Inez Alea, and today it's another tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to create this awesome slideshow in Adobe Premiere Pro. So that looks really cool. I kind of took the angle of making an Instagram slideshow. We won't be seeing that exactly in today's tutorial because that would stretch the tutorial too long. Um, but I will show you the techniques for the 3D. Uh, I will show you the techniques on how to do the slideshows itself. So kind of the same. Uh, and I will also do a brief overview on how I created the Instagram uh, slideshow. And if you are interested in that slideshow, I will put a link in the description where you can go ahead and buy that template on our website. It's completely for Premiere Pro, so uh, you don't need After Effects to edit this template, which is really cool. It's like our first real template that allows this. And also you support the channel by doing so. So that would be great. And I would be grateful for that. Uh, I do have some packages that I just received here from Razer, which I'd like to show you, which is really cool. And also here, a mouse mat, which I actually really, really needed. Um, my desk is kind of scratched. And also the noise people here while I'm doing these tutorials is kind of terrible. So yeah. I've always been a very big fan from Razer. I do have a mouse here from Logitech, but it has a big, big issue in my opinion. Now it's pretty clean, but um, these, it has these kind of ribbles for grip. Uh, but as I'm using this on a daily basis, it kind of gets uh, full of bacteria and gets very, very dirty because of all the, uh, the skin that comes off in the grip, which is really, really disgusting in my opinion. As you can see right here, you can maybe see it, I don't know. Uh, the focus should be good, but as you can see, um, I'm not the biggest fan of this mouse. So Razer sent me over a new one, uh, which looks very promising. It's amazing for performance and for gaming. Anyway, let's jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and see how to create that slideshow. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. And as you can see, this is my video uh, of Instagram. So where you see um, this kind of fade in with the photos and the likes and the description, I kind of custom made everything inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, which was a very cool uh, kind of challenge. Uh, and if you go in one of these nested comps, you could go in here and change your image right here. And if you replace that, that will update the entire slideshow. And of course, you can also go in and change all the texts and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Uh, what I will be showing you today is how to create a 3D kind of look, how to uh, import your images, how to make them square, how to give it a nice small white border and how to give it that drop shadow and that depth. And as you can see right here. So we're going to start off with a fresh new composition. Um, I'm actually going to create a new project for this and rename it Slideshow Tutorial. Okay, I will import my images. Here I have some images that I took while I was on vacation in Spain. So um, I'll choose a few that I like that have some kind of variation. Uh, maybe this one and there we go. So let's import these four uh, or five. No, four. We have four images to work with and make a thumbnail so we can actually see them right here. Okay, so we'll create a new sequence and just make it full HD. Main sequence. Then I will close the other sequences so we know what we're working with right here. So now we have a fresh project. What I want to do is actually drag one of these images into my sequence. So let's start off with this image and drag it in. 
Uh, we'll also zoom in a little bit and actually make it a little bit longer than five seconds. Maybe something like 15 seconds should about yeah should be around uh, about right. And then we'll click on that image and scale it down until we can actually see the full size image in our uh, yeah sequence project monitor right here. Now we'll right click and nest this image and rename it image 01. And there we go. Now we have a nested sequence. We can open up that nested sequence and change a few of these settings. First of all, I want to go to the sequence tab right here. Click on that sequence settings and change the frame size and the width to the same as the height. So that's 1080 by 1080. Now we have a square image. Click OK. And boom, we have our square image. Of course, you can click on your image, click on the motion or actually drag it around a little bit to get a better uh, kind of composition. Uh, so play around with everything until you're satisfied. I kind of like this uh, composition and we're done. So go back to the main composition and now we have the square to work with. So we can scale it down just like this. And then of course, uh, we could go and maybe alt and drag it up and kind of uh, click on this first one, the, the first layer, and increase it to something like 65, uh, or maybe even 62, or even just 60, and then go for effects, video effects, and then color correction. And maybe apply a simple tint effect here, and we'll change the black also to white. Boom, so now we have a nice wide frame. That's how I, I didn't do it like this. I actually created a rectangle in my other uh, example, but this uh, works just as fine. So now we have a square image uh, with this nice white going on. Uh, we can always go and go into the scale uh, and check the uniform scale and kind of play it with uh, that way. So it's just to show you what is possible here. Maybe 60 in this, you could be 80 uh, or like 70. And then you could like drag it down so you have this kind of, um, yeah, how are they called? Uh, these kind of Polaroid results, which is also really cool. So you can play around and just find something that you really like. Then you select these two se uh, nested sequences and again, right click, nest this sequence. So now we have image 01 design. Click OK. And there we go. We have our first image. We can also search for a radial shadow uh, which you will find right here under perspective and apply that to your nested sequence and then we can also go to the project manager right here uh, we can actually close these panels to our original project manager and create a color mat here we'll click ok immediately just having our original uh, resolution click ok and make it white click ok and just rename it to bg for background click ok then now our video is currently, our image is currently on the first layer. We want to drag that up to the second layer so we can drag our background on the bottom layer. So now we have a nice white background with the radial shadow applied right here, as you can see, which doesn't look quite nice. Uh, what we want to do is actually uh, reset our light source to the center. So that's uh, 960 and we can actually copy it from the position right here to 540. And then, of course, the uh, projection distance, we can change it to 3 and maybe increase a softness of 25 and then lower the opacity, something like 25. And now we have a soft, nice shadow uh, for our uh, image right here. OK, so we have this going on. What we want to do is actually uh, click in the beginning here and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we see a little bit more of this uh, motion animation timeline. Uh, here is where we will do all the animations. So we want to make this as big as possible so we can really focus ourselves on this. So right here in the beginning of the timeline, we want to click on the keyframe for the scale and the position. We also want to go for effects and just delete this effect, go to in, uh, into video effects and go for perspective basic 3D and just apply that to your image. So now we have this ba um, basic 3D, which will also create a nice uh, tilt and swivel effect for. Okay, so now we have four keyframes, one for position, one for scale, one for the swivel and the tilt. So what we want to do is kind of offset our position right here and maybe make it like 90 in scale. Then we want to animate the swivel to something different, maybe something like that and a nice tilt also. Okay, there we go. And then go like five seconds in time or yeah, let's go for five seconds in time. And we want to animate that to something different. So maybe uh, we want to change that to like minus five uh, and this like minus 10. 
So now we have this kind of animation, uh, which, which is quite slow. Uh, but now we also want to increase our scale and move it over. Maybe play a little bit more with these animations. Okay, I think this will look pretty cool. Maybe we don't want to animate it that far. And we want to animate it from 80. So it's really playing around with all these settings, but now we have a really cool animation. Okay, pretty cool. So now what I want to do is actually go in here and click on our image 01 sequence. And if we just go back to this, uh, this view, it's a little bit easier to kind of see what is a sequence. We have these two sequences, image 01 and image 01 design. We can copy and paste these. So we have them twice and now we can rename the image 01 to image 02 and image 01 design to image 02 design. So what I want to do essentially is open up image 02 and just drag a new image in here. So maybe the uh, Benidorm water and hold alt and drag it on top of this image that will replace it just like that. Then we can click on that image and again reposition it to your preferences. Something like that should be fine. Now we can go into the image to design and we can click on image 01, image 01, both of these. Click on image 02 here in the project manager, hold alt and drag it on top of that. That will also replace it right here. Okay, so now what we want to do is bring the image 02 design also in here. You can alt click on the audio and just delete that. And we can bring it over maybe to something around here. Maybe scale it up like that. And we want to also animate it just like we did on the first one. Again, go for effects perspective, basic 3D and apply that right here. Then we create keyframes for, for position, scale and the swivel and tilt. And then we want to animate that again. So uh, kind of find a cool way to edit this one. I think something like that is pretty cool. Coming out of the side, scale it down just a little bit or actually uh, something like that here okay and then we want to animate it over five seconds more to the left and a little bit more closer to the camera and also a little bit straighter to the lens okay pretty cool Okay, so now we have this really cool 3D effect, which I really love. And then just right here at five seconds at the keyframe intersection, we want to select everything um, of these two and just trim them like this. Then we're going to select both of these and hold shift and press D on the keyboard. That will apply a basic transition right here. If you don't know this, be sure to check out a video for the best tips on Premiere Pro. I will put a card on this video, but it's really simple. You can just go to uh, video effects dissolve, cross dissolve, right click and select uh, this as a default transition. So now we have this kind of fade in, which is really cool. And then we have this overlapping going on. All we want to do is kind of really emphasize the fact that this is 3D and this is further in distance. To do that, we do that using uh, depth of field. But of course, in uh, Premiere Pro, we don't have real 3D, so we have to fake it. So we can go to the effects, search for uh, the video effects, blur and sharpen and apply a Gaussian blur to your first image. Then here, I want to just increase it. That's all. And boom. You can even do kind of a uh, focus pull, which is also really cool. We can go over here and then over five seconds or like uh, maybe bring this keyframe over here and then right at three, we want to set this to zero and do the opposite for the other one. And then we have this focus pull. Which is also a really cool effect in my opinion. Alright, so that's how to create this kind of slideshow. All you can do to finish it off is import 
a nice lens leak, which you can actually get on our website. We have a 4K light leaks uh, and film burns overlay pack, which is really cool. And it just increases the production value of your entire edit in many kind of occasions for fashion, travel videos, music videos, whatever, uh, you name it. You can do a lot of fun things with that. It's a kind of overlay that gives it kind of this light leak really cool and then you can transition into the next scene and to the to do the next scene you just basically do the same you select these two maybe bring them over right here now you can bring this one up like uh, a few f f a few layers like this and then you bring these two over here so they overlap just a little bit and then we have uh, this really cool overlay and boom the new ones start coming in right here. So that's basically how you do it. It's super simple to do. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also subscribe to the channel and definitely get the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. Also check out our website. We have a bunch to offer for filmmakers and motion graphics artists. And if you buy something, you help to support the channel. So I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.